emodels.co.uk. Make something awesome. Hello, I'm Chris from Gross Models, and uh, this is my first build that I'm building specifically for the people at emodels.co.uk. Uh, this is the C141B Starlifter uh, from Roden. Uh, so I'll get it out of the box and we'll uh, see what we've got to go on. See you in a moment. Okay, right, we've got, um, I've taken it all out of the plastic so you can not get the lovely crinkly plastic sounds. Uh, we have several decals, mainly lines, which we'll see about either painting those or using them when I get around to it. Uh, we've got lots of information about the plane itself, when it was put in service and how it was built and wingspan, everything else in there. Uh, building instructions, which are fairly simple on this, there's not that many parts. And uh, the final bit we've got is a nice colour uh, cool out sheet for the, the colours used, which it lists for Leho colours, but obviously others can be used. Uh, and camo layout and decal location. The plastic kit itself, we have uh, quite a few little sprues actually, all small sprues, very strange. Uh, the main fuselage itself is too big for the camera, although it's a 144 kit, it's say a big ship a big plane or uh, so uh, yeah so we've got the two sides uh, we've got two sprues of wings which are again a decent size we've got uh, two identical sprues for the uh, must be the tail plane Not sure why there's two difference. Oh, because this has got the the flaps on on both sides on one. So we've got two for both sides and some landing gear. Uh, we've got three identical sprues for. Oh, sorry, four, four identical sprues for the engines. Obviously, all the same. Just need to be built up and then put on. And we've got one more, which has got, I don't know what that bit is. Uh, no, can't tell immediately what bits they are. It looks like some more landing gear there. And little hatches or some sort of covers. Uh, and the final clear, clear sprue with some windows and obviously the main cockpit, which has got nice misting on the bits that are going to be painted and obviously transparent for the windows themselves which will need masking off. Uh, so I'm going to start off as ever by having a flick through the instructions and seeing the order we're going to be doing things in. Uh, I'm pretty sure most of this is going to be built and then painted. It won't need any painting as I go. Uh, and the first thing is the bits that I didn't know what they were. Uh, putting the wheels on some of the undercarriage uh, yeah, that would be sort of, um, undercarriage bays on there as well. Then lots of wheels to go onto bits. Uh, the undercarriage, I think, I will leave separate and paint that separately before I put that on as the engines. So a little couple of bits of sub assemblies, but the wings themselves will go on and be painted, and then obviously the cockpit can go on as well couple of little detail pieces to go on the sides but that is pretty much that additional view for some decal positions apparently which is pretty much the the black line uh, once I get that far I'll decide and say if I'm using the decals or painting it it's quite a fine line so decals will probably be easier I'll see how they come out what they look like there's uh, in the decals themselves we've got obviously some Logos for the sides, some numbers and small bits. No step. It's obviously for bits around the wings by the looks of it. So 
I'll, um, as I start off, putting some undercarriage together by the looks of it, and uh, catch you up there. See you in a moment. Right, as for the first step, I've got the pieces necessary, cut off the sprue. There is some ejector marks on there, so I'm going to be getting rid of them. Don't need those on there at all. And using a, a sanding stick just to tidy up the edges where they've been cut off. So just to make a, a nicer edge on there, the same using a smaller edge on the exposed metal work where that was attached as well with a rounded round surface obviously you don't need to make flat sides on it you need to sort of keep the, the stick moving as you're sanding that down even more so on the wheels which were attached I say top and bottom on this so just sort of rolling around in all directions on this just to get rid of the little bit of nub that's still left on there so just the last bit not a problem that's fine so uh, this piece itself obviously that goes into there and the two wheels go on to those now uh, these are obviously not a tight fit they do need gluing they're quite loose on there so I need to glue those on but painting inside of this is going to be a bit tricky so I'm actually not going to glue those together quite yet I shall be painting these before assembly irrespective of what I said two minutes ago if you've seen any of my videos previously you'll know that my plans are more uh, guidelines rather than plans they do change so what I'm actually going to do is get together all of the wheel sections uh, there's two more bigger bigger wheel sections for the the rear undercarriage so I'll get those apart and together and uh, well, not together get them apart and get them all primed and painted up first and then we can see about assembling them later so I'm actually going to put that aside for now and move on to the next section which is going to be one of the engines so we've got uh, so two sides sorry, off camera there uh, two sides front and the back basically you can take uh, the, the wheels on there obviously if used for the other undercarriage they just put them on the same sprue which is quite nice and this again one of the extra detail pieces so I'll just have that bit left on the sprue when I finish here uh, so I'm going to cut these off now now the nippers that I'm using are nice sharp nippers so I can actually get in pretty close to the the piece without actually causing any damage to the the kit itself but there is still obviously some residue left there so starting off with a, a fairly coarse sanding stick to get rid of the worst of it now on these curved pieces although so I'm getting rid of the worst of it now what I need to do is get them both together and then I can sand the sand around so I'm not getting a, a sharp flat edge so I can actually get it quite nice and rounded so I'm gonna go ahead and get all of these engines cut off I say that's obviously the the back and the front going on there as well I'm pretty sure that I'll be able to paint those once they're built so I'm going to get those four built up and then uh, get on with the painting and the rest of the building so see you soon okay what we've got now I've primed the four engine fronts and backs I haven't done the sides yet because they need to be done in the, the camo anyway so they will need priming but not worrying about them at the moment now these bits, uh, obviously the backs and the fronts, the back piece is oily steel and the front bit is mainly oily steel with steel around the outside. Uh, so what I'm going to do is use um, Vallejo Air 
They're using steel and some gunmetal, which is sort of oily steel. I'm going to mix in some steel with it to give it that right sort of shade. Uh, and basically paint all of it in that, and then I'll brush paint around the edge in steel on the front. Uh, so there's no point in masking that, it's all pretty small. Um, now, to give you an idea of the scale, I've got my little pointy man, who is 1 to 144 as well. So obviously, next to the front of the engine, he's pretty much the same size. So it's quite a scary big plane, this one. So uh, yeah, don't stand near the fronts of these engines because you're pretty much fit coming through the back. Now these, when they do go together, let me give you an idea. The back piece obviously just slips in the back there. So you won't actually be able to see very much of it at all anyway. Just the, the inside bit, which I'll be adding some weathering and uh, sort of bluing to the, the metals as well but that I can do when it is assembled the front piece obviously goes on the front so I'll be masking that off when I come to do the main bodywork as well and obviously masking the inside so that's but uh, obviously need to get the fairing wired up now the top piece of this goes into the wing so I can hold that with that while I'm doing the main painting of the rest of it although I'll probably be doing that while it's on the wing to be honest so first off, I need to get these done. So I'm just gonna mix up in the cup some of this uh, oily steel type color and get those sprayed. Then when that's dry, I'll brush paint the steel on the edge anyway. And then I can get these in assembled into there four times and be ready for the next bit. So I'm gonna get them painted and uh, then I'll show you the assembly while I'm doing it. Okay, I'm sorting out the undercarriage and uh, there is some issues with a couple of these bits. They've got some seam lines. So before priming and painting these, as well as getting rid of the nub marks, basically just need to very lightly sand down the centers just to get rid of that so thin line from, from where it's manufactured basically. Uh, probably get away without doing anything with it, but it's always nice to get into the practice of getting rid of them just to make sure everything looks as nice as you can really so i'm just sanding those down the primer is going to cover a lot of it as well but so you can just see the the line down the middle there can't really get into all of it some of it's obviously very deep in very thin areas on these scale but you can do what you can just worth mentioning that it's say something to look out for on some kits some some are worse than others this isn't bad but i say it's just worthy of note something to keep an eye out for so i'll uh, continue on with these what i have done is uh, prepared the engine bits so i've got the the front and the back uh, which has been done in the sort of the the oily steel and the the chrome around the edge I've decided when I'm putting these together I'm obviously going to install the the back bit in and then glue it together because that is say not a problem to mask up in there but I don't need to put the front on yet there's no need to put it on and mask it to paint the rest of it when I can leave it off and not worry about having to mask it and then just paint the rest of it and then when it's assembled these can be one of the last bits just to stick onto the front so I'm going to leave those to one side now and get on with the rest of it. Uh, so I'm going to get these, let's say, sanded down, get rid of the nub marks from the wheels and everything else, get those primed, and then start the, the detail painting of the undercarriage. So see you in a moment. Right, while I'm waiting for my undercarriage to dry, if you excuse the expression, I'm going to start putting some wings together. Now we've got the two identical sprues, which have got the two tops of the tail fin and two little covers which go over part of the undercarriage afterwards so basically I'm going to get them all off the sprue now same as ever I'm just going to cut them off and then file down the extra bits of nub I'm actually going to get all of this off the sprue 
then I don't need to worry about the sprue anymore basically so although I'm not going to be using this bit immediately I'm going to get that off and then not have to worry about keeping hold of the bits now as I say the part count on this kit is quite low so there's not lots to worry about so that's the end of that sprue so I'm going to get that out of the way for now I'll do the same on the other one in a moment uh, as always with these say so it's just a case of a little bit of sanding where that um, little bit of nub is left I'm not going to go too far on these because I'm going to get them stuck together first just getting rid of any bits that might interfere with the addition of the two bits so sort of taking off the, the inside edge a little bit now uh, these obviously just go together pretty much like that oh, there is a little bit of flasher on there as well Strangely enough, in the same place on both of them. Must be down to how it's manufactured. So I need to get rid of that little edge here. So again, sanding is the way to go. It doesn't take very long. It's not much. It's very thin sort of plastic film that's left there. You can feel it when it's gone. That's it. Just make sure there's nothing left on that inside edge. There we go. Now just a quick test fit to make sure they are going in there as they should. A little bit around that edge of there as well. I'm just going to use a small edge of that just to get in there and get rid of that little corner piece. A little across the top, but I say that's not a problem. And that goes in there quite nicely, so I'm happy with that. So I'm going to use some extra thin. Uh, basically mainly going for the, the two locating pins. But I am going to put some just around the edge. Most of it will evaporate before I get it down, but we can add some more into the edge if we need to in a moment. So I'm just going to hold those together for a couple of seconds. to make sure that's in there, put the top back on the glue so I don't spill that everywhere. So now we can see where that nub is, uh, the corner's not quite together so let's just touch the glue to the edge, let that seep in and then that'll go together properly. And then when that's dry, which is about now, we can treat this just as one piece and get an edge to that. Which gets rid of the little bits of nub and so it gives us a, a leading edge that looks quite nice. There you go, no problem with that. I'll go down with a, a slightly finer sander as well and get rid of this bit and do the same on the other one and basically do the same on the, the larger wings as well. Cut them off, get them together. Now these larger wings have got the engines to go on the bottom there. But I say I can put those on later. So I'm just going to get the four bits of wing together and then come back and keep going. See you in a moment. And there we have some wings. Uh, basically use the extra thin to glue the two halves together and sand it off the rough nubs. Uh, use some extra thin to also sort of seal in the edges just by touching it to the edge and then squeezing it together and then sending out the resultant goo that comes out. So happy with those. They're okay and the smaller ones much the same but smaller. Uh, right I have also cut off most of the other uh, pieces that I'll be using. I figured while I'm here I might as well get them all done. The last bits still on the spruce are the main fuselage itself which I'm going to do next uh, and the clear parts which I'm going to do when I've done the, the fuselage. Just got sort of basically six windows and the, the canopy, the cockpit area. 
uh, I've got cut off in the box there all the little bits which I haven't sanded down yet uh, just figured I'd get them all cut off and put away and then I don't have to worry about sprues anymore uh, so uh, gonna get the last couple of bits cut off I'm not going to bother doing that on camera because you've seen it all before uh, then we've got these bits that fit apparently inside basically like that as far as I can tell which gives me the mounting point for the wheels on the inside there is some sort of flash to get rid of from in there uh, then we've got the outside covers which I've primed uh, the wheels go on there then the covers go over so uh, yeah it's getting there and then obviously the wings just slot in like that I'm gonna have to have a bigger camera angle I think because although it's a 144 kit it's getting quite large uh, so I'll carry on get that done and then uh, be back with you in a moment okay one point to note when you're cutting these off the sprue the little ridges on the top there are part of the kit they're not extra um, they're only on one side of it and when they go together I assume they're some sort of radio antenna sort of something or other uh, now I'm not going to be sticking these together quite yet and there is actually a bit of an issue with the fit a little bit slightly warped but nothing that a little bit of glue isn't going to fix I think I uh, do need to get rid of some of the ejector marks from the inside there where they're going to be a bit close so a little bit of clean up before I can even think about getting them together when they do go together I have to put the interior piece for the which I haven't got out yet interior piece for the front landing gear let me grab that out and you can see that um, needs to go inside there I don't remember which way round but obviously I saw that before it goes in let's have a quick look if I can see uh, yeah wide bit at the back so that goes in about there obviously between the two uh, so I'm going to be doing that getting that assembled and then prime and painting that in one piece with the wings on as well because I think I can get a better finish obviously over the seams and things there uh, that can go inside anyway as can these interior pieces to the um, side back wheels and then I can get the wheels fitted after painting basically making it a lot easier for myself rather than having to mess around with it so uh, yeah a little bit of clean up to do and I say I won't be fixing these together quite yet but when I do I say it it's going to take a little bit of sort of clamping just to hold those together and it's coming together and looking quite big considering say the scale of it being 144 it's quite big so uh, yeah see you in a moment when I've got this a bit more together right all the undercarriage has been primed now most of this is actually going to have to be sprayed in steel I could brush paint it but it's pretty much all of this inside pieces so a lot easier to just spray because it's all of these little bits as well if that's on camera there you go uh, the one bits that are still need to be steel but I'm not going to be spraying are the sort of interior hubcaps on the wheels uh, and the outsides need to be done in black I'm going to be using uh, Tamiya's rubber black for the tyres because well they're rubber tyres uh, so I'm actually going to brush paint the all of the tyres basically but I'll do the interior piece in steel first and spray all the rest of these pieces and the big panels as well so I'll get them done brush paint that and then when that's dry I can brush paint the tyres themselves in black then if I have got any steel going over the edge there that doesn't really matter so I'm going to start with brush painting these and then I can spray the rest while these are drying uh, now brush painting interior small pieces on 10 wheels uh, I'm going to be using a, a fairly small brush I'm going to be using a, a double O size brush which is quite small and uh, 
say Vallejo steel paint, which I'm just going to basically drop a couple of drops out onto a plastic palette. Then I can pick that up, and then with these, so basically it's just a case of pretty much filling in the interior. Obviously with these it's nice and easy to be able to turn the wheel round to get where you need to get, rather than trying to move the brush. So I'm just brushing across the outside, then turning around to a new bit, and then brush around the outside. The brush holds more paint than I need for one wheel, so I'll probably be able to get two, maybe more done. But I can go back and do another coat if need be as well. Uh, so I'll get the rest of these done, and then spray the, the other bits, and uh, come back and show you some of the assembly. Right, I've painted some of this in the steel, and I've been looking at the assembly and the order in which I need to do some things. So basically we've got the interior piece that goes inside there, like that. We've got an outside hatch cover which basically goes over like that and we've got the other cover the other side which attaches like that. Now the insides of these have all been painted in the aluminium, although in the chrome, sorry. Steel even, I'll get the colour right. Uh, I'm going to need to do the rest of the inside and one of the little hatch covers that goes over there as well. But the outside obviously will need to be done in the uh, underside grey. So what I'm actually going to do is install that piece from the inside, because obviously I need to. I'm going to be getting the undercarriage together next, but keep that separate. I'm not going to put on these bits as yet, because I need to paint, obviously, underneath where it's going to go, basically. Instead of having to mask it, I might as well just paint it separately. So I'll be keeping that off, and the other cover off, because I don't want to mess up the, the inside bit. But I might be able to so, put it on while I'm painting. Uh, to get the colour matching, but it's only going to be one colour on there, so I might just do that from the outside. But that will all be put on after the painting's finished, I think, and might need to touch up around the edge. So basically I need to get the inside bit attached any time now, really. Um, then I can mask off this while I'm painting the, the main outside. Uh, so, next up is getting the undercarriage together. I've done the wheels. They've been painted in the steel and uh, rubber black. They're quite nice. And the assembly pieces that they're going on to, I do need to finish off. And uh, obviously finish off where I've been holding them, painting them. And the bits in the hydraulic bit have got to be done in silver, which is going to look much the same as the steel, but slightly different. So hopefully it'll give a nice effect. And obviously we'll need weathering afterwards anyway. So I'm going to move that to there, so I can touch up the other bit. And uh, come back in a moment and start assembling the undercarriage. Okay, I've done the silver on the little pointy man. Uh, just on the very exposed in interior part of the hydraulics. It looks exactly the same to me. I can really can't tell the difference, but I've done it. Uh, now, I need to assemble the wheels. So. We've got two of these to do, so I'm going to do one and then do the other one. Not boring you on camera. The wheels themselves have been painted in the combination of uh, steel and black. Actually, I'll just do one set of these rather than all of them. Uh, basically, I've got four positions that they need to go into just on the outside there, like that. So, I'm going to add some extra thin onto these. I'm going to do one side at a time, I think it's going to be the easiest way of doing it. Just get a touch on each of those, and basically, drop the wheels on. And then do the same on the other side, once they're dry, and do the same on the other pair. The front wheel is slightly different, 
in that I've got to find which one they go on to. Uh, but not the big one, they go on to the little one. So the little ones that are right at the top there. These wheels are slightly different in that they have a hole all the way through them. Uh, so, again, basically, I'm just going to drop some extra thin onto there. And drop the wheel over that. And again, do the same the other side once that side is dried. So, that'll be that. And then I'll put these undercarriages away for now. And I won't be installing them until after the main painting is done, so they don't get in the way, basically. But at least they'll be done and out of the way. So I'll get them assembled and then show you them, and then move on to the next step. Okay, we're approaching the final part of the build, putting the windows in. Uh, now these are rectangular pieces, if I can pick them up. Rectangular pieces, but it's only the little portholes that are coming through the the door there. Uh, but I'm still going to be using a, a canopy glue to put them in place, just in case I, I mess up. So just got some around the edge of the hole, and then making sure I get it the right way round, so the window is actually facing outwards. Dropping that in to there. I'm going to add a little bit more canopy glue to the outside, just to make sure that's held in place. And there you have one porthole window. Uh, got the other two to do, I'll get them done now. And then we have the last bit, uh, putting it all together, putting the cockpit canopy on, which is also going to be with, let's say, the clear canopy, clear fix canopy glue. And then uh, getting the engines together, so I'll see you in a moment. Okay, coming to fit the last piece that needs to go on the inside, I find there's a, a ridge here, which is preventing it from going all the way in. So I'm just going to use a knife. Not sure why that's there. It doesn't. It wasn't attached to any sprue or anything like that. So I'm just carefully shaving that away. There we go. Get rid of those little bits. That should be a much better fit with that now. Yep, that will actually locate in there now, flush everywhere. So I'm just going to drop some extra thin around the edge there. Let's hold that in place. Do that. Obviously, you've got to do the same on the other side as well, on the other part. Uh, this, as I say, interior piece it needs to be painted, so I could have got away without doing that separately, but there we go. Uh, I'll be doing that afterwards. The windows are in. Uh, I'm going to be putting the cockpit pan canopy on later because I do need to. Basically, I'm going to paint the inside of it black, so you can't see it through the the inside. So once I've got the other side of that in, I'll be getting that together, and that will be that. I'll show you that when that's done. Uh, the last other bit is back to where we started. The engine pods need to be glued together. Uh, so I've got the exhaust drops in there. And again, extra thin around the edge there. And the entire top piece is actually glued. So I'll just get some on there and some across the bottom and across the other bit. And then that will just drop over the top. Make sure it's all home. Uh, once this is dry, I will just be sanding the edges just to keep them all flush. I'll do that and then I say the other bit later will be glued in place but I don't need to do that now because I need to 
paint the rest of it, but that bit's already done. I can mask this end piece, it's not a problem. Sorry, I realise I'm almost off shot there. Uh, yep, so put that aside for now. Get the other three of these done and sanded just to finish off the, the edge. And then get the rest of that together. The wheels are done and dry. So they are good to go. Again, not going to be installing them quite yet because I need to paint around them. But it's quite nice that they're done and separate now and the front one obviously as well. So I can put them away and uh, we're almost at the end of the build and, and it's just the painting to come so I'll get that last bit done. Right that's the bits prepared for the landing gear. I do notice that although there's a nice you know, hole located ready for the whole thing being assembled there is no pin on the other side so uh, yeah be wary of that if you're building this kit. It's nice, but there's a couple of bits that are just not quite right. Uh, so, I just need to get this assembled. So, ordinarily, I'd glue the pin, but so there's no pin. So, I'm just going to put some extra thin around, starting at the nose, and obviously, where I've attached the front wheel mounting point. So, I get that lined up and together. Trying to get it as square as I can and just hold that there for a few minutes or moment, moments rather. Give that a chance to set before I work my way backwards and get it all lined up. Obviously the, the closer fit you can get it, the less you have to worry about sanding and getting everything done. So there we go. No, not really taking. In that case I'm going to start in the middle. The middle will go together nicer and then I can worry about getting the ends together. So, I'll get this done and then get the wings on. Uh, I've done the engines, let's say without the front pieces on them, so all four of those are ready to go as well. Again, I won't be putting them, I will be putting them on, yes. I can put them on because I need to do that before painting anyway. So, I'll get this glued and then come back and see you in a moment. Right, due to the size of this now, I've had to readjust the camera, so there's a good chance I'm going to hit it with my head. So, if it goes all shaky, and I say, ouch, that's probably what's happened. <coughs> right, I've glued it all together. Uh, been sanding down the seam there. Uh, there's still a few marks on there, which I need to finally polish out, but I'm trying to... It's, it's got like a matte effect to the body, so I don't really want to make it shiny, shiny. But obviously I've got to make it smooth. So yeah, almost there. Just got a last couple of bits to do on that. And then obviously the wings to be fitted in. Uh, just gonna be a little bit of glue. The, the back ones are not gonna be a problem. They're quite a tight fit and they're gonna go in and hold in just right, like that. Um, the main wings themselves are not such a tight fit. So I'm a little bit concerned about those. I've got obviously to there's quite a lot of surface to stick, so that's not too much of a problem. But I'm going to have to hold that to get that done, and then probably a little bit of sprue glue in there just to fill in that seam. Well, it's going to be sort of a panel line down there anyway, I would assume. So not not the end of the world. Uh, and then that will be that. Onto the bottom here, obviously we've got the engines to fit, which again a nice tight fit, and they will flows in quite nicely to the the moulding there when that goes a little bit further in. So that will be just about that so far. As I say, I'm not putting the undercarriage on yet. 
uh, and there are a couple other bits the the little panels that go over there the way the undercarriage actually fits in pokes up through that hole so I'm assuming that that's a deliberate thing when it's uh, on the floor uh, obviously when it takes up and takes off and they fold in however they fold in that wouldn't be part of it so the cover on there is actually going to be at an angle so I won't be putting that on quite yet either but that's almost there uh, there's a couple of other little bits like this that go on at the back which again need to be installed but I'm not going to do that until the last minute basically because they're going to get broken off so I'm almost there I'm going to say glue, glue the last few bits together and then give you a shot of it completed or at least semi-completed um, the build complete and then uh, that will be the end of this episode uh, the next one when I come back will be painting doing the main paint job on the, the plane itself so uh, yeah I'll get the last few bits done and then show you it finished for now okay that's that finished for this part of this build um, I've just put a couple of other of my models on it to give a sense of scale uh, we've got a tank and the first kit I built the Hawk Hurricane um, it's a big plane it's it's really huge they're obviously the same scale the one the 144 but uh, yeah they're quite big um, I've just dropped on the canopy and the fronts of the engines just to keep it looking there I've got a couple of paint pots underneath the wings to actually give it the right angle while they're finishing drying and to stop it rocking from side to side uh, what I've actually done is just touch some uh, Tamiya cement across the the seams there which hopefully will give a, a good finish um, before uh, sanding down priming um, but that's actually it for this uh, first part of this build um thanks for watching i hope you've enjoyed what you've seen i hope you're uh, thinking about buying the kit and uh say so stay tuned stick around for the next part where i'll be finishing the last couple of bits and painting so uh yeah thanks for watching see you soon bye <laughs>